Hi, I'm Christine Herman of Herman's Quality Meat Shop in Newark, Delaware. Welcome to my YouTube channel. We're going to be talking about pot roast, mainly chuck roast, and we're going to build one tonight together. Are you ready? Wow, we have one big piece of meat here. This is a portion of the shoulder of the animal, of a steer. And we are going to seam it out and turn it into a pot roast. I'm gonna flip this a second so you can see it. This is actually boneless already. And you can see this portion here is part of the, the uh, the rib section where it meets, sorry, I got sidetracked on what I was doing and thinking here at the same time. Um, so oftentimes you'll see a chuck roast in the freeze, in the refrigerated section in a, in a major store and it will have a bone in it and it will be labeled chuck roast or chuck arm roast or bone in blade roast, have a couple different names to it. We have become more fond of a boneless roast. And I'll show you why as we go along here. And just like any other part of the animal, there's muscle in the muscles, there's tendons and, and what we refer to as gristle. And we like to take a lot of that out so that you aren't eating something that technically you shouldn't be eating that I think isn't as flavorful. So I'm going to pull off some of these muscles and we're going to get down to the nitty gritty here in a, in a couple minutes and I'll show you what it's going to look like. Doesn't look very appetizing right now, I know that. And there's a little bit of skill to this, wink, because um, I have to find and know right where those muscles are and right where those separations are so that I don't just chop right into the middle of the muscle and basically ruin the piece of meat that I want to be using to build. I'm going to kind of show this to you this way. You can see how I'm just separating out between the layers of the muscles and the fat and the different membranes. Take that off. It's going to take me a few minutes, but it's kind of fun to watch, I think. That's one of the main pieces that we're going to keep handy. And you're going to see that if this was to be cut this way, cross, that you'd be getting some of this good meat, but at the same time, some of this fat and other, what I would consider a little less desirable pieces of meat. And well, and also membranes and things that might be a little chewy and don't necessarily break down when they cook. And that's really important to note. So this particular portion of the, the shoulder of the animal is best for pot roasting or making stew because as you can imagine, this is the arm of the, the steer and he walks on all fours. So these front, what we refer to as the forequarter, is a tougher piece of meat and therefore needs to be slow cooked in liquid oftentimes braised first, but not necessarily. 
And my next seam is a little covered up here, so I'm going to expose it. Found a pocket. I'm going to swing it around again and show you that part that's not as pretty. I'm going to come back to this. Oftentimes we do this work either in, the, in our back room where our customers aren't always watching us because we're busy waiting on customers. But at the same time, we'll have this out front so that when you come in, you can see us cutting this right in front of you and how we prepare it. And that's the purpose, obviously, of this video so that you can see it right exactly how we do it. It's going to take a few minutes, as I said. There's another important piece of the puzzle. sideways and we've got this one piece here and again you'll notice that I'm going to be trimming away portions that look like this that can't be chewed or won't break down when they're cooked and you want to be mindful of that when you're buying your pot roast what actually it consists of if you're not fortunate enough to live near Herman's and be able to stop in for one of our roasts that you're going to see made right in front of your eyes, then you can ask some questions when the time comes to buy it and you go to buy it. Flip that. Move that. Come back to that side in just a minute. I'm going to take all these different layers off. It's always important for me to have a nice sharp knife. That's my go-to tool. Again, you can see what I'm removing. Getting closer to this front portion being trimmed, <clears throat> but you can see, I'm going to flip this so you can see that there's still these lines in here that I like to remove because they have veins in them that, yeah, yeah, no thanks. I personally don't like to eat something that shouldn't that shouldn't be chewy. So to me, putting a piece of meat in my mouth should not be chewy or have something chewy in it. So I like to remove those pieces that could be. So this is from a smaller steer. The piece that started out well, my block was probably about 45 or 50 pounds. The 
And what I'll do is I'll take this and I'm going to, I'll trim it up like so. And I'll discard that piece that you can't chew, but I'll save some of this meat for my ground beef. And again, that's why our ground beef tastes so good because it has different trimmings from all over the animal, including steak meat as well as from the shoulder, the rib, all different portions. It makes our ground beef taste so good. We have a video just about our burger too. Give you a little insight on that one. Leaving a little bit of fat on is okay, but not some of these membranes. They have a tendency, as I said, to be chewy. The fat will break down, and the chuck portion actually is a little fattier than a lot of people even realize. It has a lot of good marbling in it. A little spot there. Okay. I'm gonna. Hold that aside. This piece is done, I would say, for right now. So for this guy there, I don't like that. I'm picking. Come up to this next piece. Let me put that aside. And this one has more membrane on it as well. I can literally pick my finger up and pull it through like so. Again, we trim it up. This piece has a crazy membrane running through it, or tendon, that you can't even begin to chew. And I always make sure that comes out. I'll show you that in just a moment. Flip it around here. Show you what I'm doing. See, I can pull this right out. I'm going to flip this over, but I'm going to show you from the back what that looks like. We're going to talk about, you're going to get to see me take that out in just a moment. That is not something you can chew. So we're going to just take this layer of fat off. This will probably break down pretty nicely in the pan or crock pot when you're cooking it, but I like to give you a head start and take it out for you. Why should you pay for fat? From this side, that was not very visible. However, it's in here. I don't know where it is. We're going to take it out. Kind of feathers out, goes all the way through the piece of meat. And you may be saying to yourself, well, that sounds like a waste of time and energy and effort to take that out. But in my opinion, it's not a waste at all. And you'll see why in just a moment. It comes out fairly easily once you know what you're doing. But again, my knife would have a hard time cutting through that. And there's no way you're going to be able to chew that. You'd be very disappointed if that was in your pot roast. Yes, it leaves a little hole, but when I tie this together, 
it'll be okay. And you'll see that coming up here in just a moment. We're going to take this as it is and lay it over top and get tuck that tail in and lay it just like that. Then the last piece is what I call the cap or the covering. And it too has this thin layer of fat and membrane on it. Nice thing about a pot roast is it's a comfort food in the winter, but also in the summertime, you can put it in a crock pot and it doesn't heat up the house. And you still have a nice hot meal. And you can do everything ahead of time, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. All the preparing you can do ahead of time. Get your crock pot going and set it and forget it and go and enjoy your summer day. The house doesn't turn into an inferno with the oven being on all day if you're using a crock pot, which you don't have to use a crock pot. You can use a Dutch oven, which is a stove top, or you can put it in your oven if you'd prefer with a casserole dish. But the crock pot, I think, makes a nice option, especially, like I said, in the summertime because it doesn't heat up the whole house. And then we just do the same thing here is to pick this up. And again, I like to remove this because it's not digestible. spots here that I like to remove. I'd say we're in pretty good shape there. Take that. Nice and clean. Yep. Missed the spot. bring these back. Remember I tucked that little tail under and I can tuck this tail under too. I'm going to lay this nice and neat on top. And I'm going to tie it up. Uh, maybe. There we go. And this is what your boneless chuck roast from Herman's looks like when we're done. And we prepare this, and then we cut as many pounds off as you'd like, or if you want to buy the whole thing, depending upon how many people you're serving. We usually figure about three quarters of a pound per person, because that allows for some shrinkage. And leftovers, pot roast leftovers, always good. So as far as cooking a pot roast, it's relatively simple on many occasions. Um, I do have a lot of customers that like to braise it first, which is high heat on the stove top, on all sides, some, maybe some salt and pepper, and then they put it in the uh, oven or Dutch oven or crock pot, as I mentioned. And again, always with liquid, whether it's brown gravy that you're going to use, whether it's red wine, a tomato base barbecue sauce. You choose. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I have some customers that like to use this as a something to make their pit beef with. They smoke it low and slow on a smoker and then pull it.
So let's say you're thinking that you're going to be making one of these beautiful pot roasts. So then you go to the store, go to the meat department, or you come to Herman's, and you get your, your pot roast, whatever size you need for your family that you're serving. And then you go to the produce aisle, and you get your vegetables. I always like to start with carrots, celery, onions, maybe some fresh garlic, potatoes, any root vegetables will do nicely. And then take them home, and maybe you're going to do this tomorrow or the next day. You can always prepare your vegetables ahead of time, especially if you know tonight for dinner you're making a salad. What do you put in your salad? Carrots, celery, and onions. So while you have your cutting board out and your knife, cut up a few extra carrots, celery, and some onion to go in your pot roast. Set them aside either in a plastic bag or in a container. Put them in the refrigerator, and now you're one step ahead of the game for your pot roast for tomorrow. Always be prepared. Always be one step ahead. It helps. So, you may want to square this off now. Right there, that last string didn't hold. Maybe trim this up a little bit, make it pretty. Voila, there's your pot roast. A beauty. In my opinion, that's beautiful. And again, we cut that as big or as small as you want. And as I mentioned, having a nice knife to cut up your vegetables. We'll talk about knives in another video. You always want to have your vegetables prepared. Just get them ready. Always have them handy so that you are ready to go. That is also my kitchen tip for the night. I hope that was helpful. Thank you. In my mind, I think a pot roast is a comfort food, something you can have in the wintertime to warm up the house and warm up your soul, or sometimes having it in the summertime when you just want a hot meal. You can make it as light and refreshing as you'd like by putting it in a crock pot so you don't heat up the whole house, but knowing that you've got a nice homemade meal and always having fresh garden vegetables, carrots, celery, onions, and whatever else, fresh garlic, whatever else you'd like to put in it, always makes for a great meal. I hope that this was a, a fun and helpful video for you. Please remember to subscribe to our channel and like our videos. Feel free to comment below and let us know if there's any other content that you would like us to talk about. We thank you very much. God bless. Christine Herman.